All right, way back in the fall of 2020, the New York Post dared to report the truth about the Hunter Biden, Joe Biden, and the laptop from hell. It was censored by the rest of the media with the help of the FBI warning them that this may be misinformation. But today, with possible charges now looming against Hunter, oh, the Post was barred from Biden's only event. Now, this comes as the New York Post columnist and best-selling author Miranda Devine is reporting that Hunter's ex-business partner, Devin Archer, who has been convicted of fraud, is now making one last-ditch effort to avoid prison. According to Devin, quote, or I'm sorry, Miranda Devine, quote, friends with knowledge of Hunter's thinking are telling Archer to accept that the Bidens have thrown him under the bus and that a last-minute presidential pardon has been ruled out. She continues, quote, they have urged him to save himself by using the only currency that he has left, and that is his knowledge of the Biden family and their influence-peddling scheme, uh, for which he had a front-row seat for four years during Joe Biden's vice presidency. Now, for reference, this is Devin Archer golfing with Hunter and Joe, and that photo emerged after Biden swore over and over and over again during the 20, uh, 2020 campaign that he never spoke to his son about his foreign business dealings. In reality, Joe met in person with at least 14 of Hunter Biden's foreign business associates. And now with more from the New York Post, Fox News contributor Miranda De Devine. I'm sure your feelings are really hurt about being uh, 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 kept out of the uh, presser today. Well, look, I, I just think it's appalling. Uh, obviously, we've hit a nerve with the Biden administration, but it's not their press room. It's not Joe Biden's press room. It's the people's press room for a, an administration that is probably the most uh, untransparent of any in recent memory um, and the most opaque uh, and the president who's the least accessible to do this um, should be causing an outrage with the rest of the media. They should boycott that press room. And I think that they're just quite happy to be sycophants. You saw that at the, um, you know, the White House Correspondents' Dinner. Um, it's embarrassing the way there are journalists in Washington who just suck up to this president. They never ask him hard questions. Friday night, you had Stephanie Rule on MSNBC soft-soaping uh, the interview with Joe Biden again. This is what we see over and over. I don't know what is wrong with them. They're supposed to be doing their job and they don't. And the, the journalists who do their jobs, like our very good Washington correspondent Stephen Nelson, um, get, get treated appallingly, get thrown out, get excluded, aren't able to ask questions. And frankly, the Biden administration wants to destroy Fox News, wants to destroy the New York Post. And uh, this is the way they go. And it's because we are the only mainstream media organisations who are really uh, speaking truth to power. Almost 35 years in media, and I am very proud of my record. I have never, Miranda, went to a single White House correspondence dinner, uh, and that record will never be, it'll only get larger because I'm never going. Uh, all right, let's I, talk about Deb. I've What's been that? to a couple. <laughs> Uh, you've been, I've been to, a couple. to a couple. You have my sympathy then. Yeah. I have no. They don't like me, and I don't <laughs> like them. So let's be honest about it. It's uh, fairly straightforward. All right, it's let's true. talk about Devin Archer. Yeah. His his back is now against the wall. He's got one more shot, as I understand it, in terms of making an appeal. The only out for him would be to cooperate. Uh, that's if they even allow it to happen. Um, I'm suspicious of that only because the Justice Department and and justice in America, we have a dual system, so I'm not even sure if that deal would be available to him. Uh, do you have any indication he might flip? Well, look, all I know is that on Tuesday he has uh, his last-ditch effort, um, these oral arguments for his appeal. Um, it's the same judge, Judge Sullivan, who's part of this panel, who reversed his previous exoneration by... Uh, a, a Judge Abrams. And so it, it really, it's a real long shot that he would get any relief here. And uh, I believe, I'm told, that he's feeling despondent and really feels betrayed by the Bidens. I think he had some hope up until now that, um, that he would get a pardon because, after all, um, he, he's really taken the brunt of uh, the, the uh, punishment for a business that Hunter was involved in as well. Hunter and Devon were joined at the hip 
uh, throughout, um, you know, Joe's vice presidency. They were in Burisma together and so on. And so uh, I think that Devon thinks it's quite unfair that um, he's the one going to jail and uh, having to pay $42 million in restitution. And Hunter Biden, as usual, gets off scot-free. So he felt that he'd been loyal and um, that 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 the Bidens should be loyal in return. So uh, let's see what happens. But I think he does have information um, that certainly would be, as John Solomon said, it would be uh, material to uh, any yeah. uh, attempt to investigate Joe Biden for his role in this influence peddling scheme because he's seen it all. He's seen Joe Biden meet the, their business partners from overseas. He's seen Joe Biden talk to them on the phone. Um, you know, he, he could do a lot, and he's seen it from the start, through Burisma, through the original China deals. All right, Miranda, uh, great reporting as always. Thank you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.